Olson and his wife, Nora Olson, lived in a cabin by Lake Bemidji in Minnesota. They had been married for about 10 years. And it was about seven years ago that they moved to the town of Bemidji and started their own small logging business. Earl was a lumberjack. He sold timber and firewood along with various types of other wood. However, the most abundant in the forest near his home were shortleaf pine trees. Pine wood was really good for making high-value carpentry items, like furniture, floors, and roofing. Pine was also great timber and fuel wood. Once Earl had saved a sum of money, he and his wife started a wood crafting business together. They built a small wood workshop next to their cabin, where Nora designed various pieces of furniture and Earl made them with his own hands and sold them in town. Over only a few years, they had gathered many customers and with the income they made, it was sufficient for the two of them and, of course, their beloved dog, Baxter. Life was pretty simple in Bemidji. Every morning, Earl would rent a boat at the dock with which he and Baxter would go to the other side of the lake into the pine forest. This area was quiet. Nobody lived around here for miles. Once Earl had felled a tree, he would then have to buck the tree and make quite a few trips back to the dock with all his logs. Go, boy, fetch! Earl picked up a twig and threw it far in the distance. He watched Baxter go after it as he started walking the way himself. The air smelt like fresh pine, a scent he admired since childhood. It always reminded him of the holidays. A house filled with the scent of pumpkin spice coffee and gingerbread, it was the best time of the year. When it had been a while and Baxter hadn't returned, Earl began to search for him. He suddenly started to hear Baxter growling and barking loudly. Earl soon caught sight of his dog and also discovered a small cabin. He wasn't aware people lived on the other side of the lake in this forest area. Baxter had been barking and aggressively pushing over the fence, so much so that he broke the wooden post and jumped to the other side. Suddenly, a young woman opened the door of her cabin and stepped out staring at the dog in rage. Baxter suddenly began barking at her. Down, Baxter! Earl yelled in a loud voice, but Baxter didn't pay heed to his command. Earl couldn't make sense of Baxter's strange behavior. He was also surprised to see that the young woman neither moved from her place nor asked for help. Earl hurried to put Baxter on a leash and pulled the dog aside. I'm so sorry, he doesn't usually behave like this. Earl looked back at the woman holding Baxter down. I apologize for the damage, I can repair it for you if you like. The young woman didn't respond to Earl. She shifted her gaze to him and glared at him with a strange look on her face. It made Earl a bit uneasy. He quickly said, I, I'll return with the wooden fence for you tomorrow. Trying not to make eye contact, Earl rubbed his dog's head to calm him. What is it, boy? What's bothering you? Come on, let's go from here. The whole morning, Baxter continued to behave strange. It was like he was untamable. He continued to bark and tried to run off. Earl had to keep him tied to a tree while he worked. What took you so long? The food is running cold. I made chili with smoked sausages. I know, I could smell it from outside. Smells wonderful. Sit down. You look a little tensed. Is everything okay? Something really strange happened today. I came across a cabin in the middle of the forest. Baxter was behaving really odd. He never did anything like this before. It's like he went rogue. He broke the fence and tried to attack the woman that lived there. That's strange. Maybe Baxter picked up on something. Dogs can sense a lot of things. Did you speak to the woman? Could be. I apologized to her, but she didn't reply to me. She just stared at me. Now that's rude. Who is she? I don't know. I didn't even know people live in these forests. 
Baxter seemed to calm down after he returned. However, the dog chose to stay seated by the log pile in front of Earl the whole time that he chopped wood. That was very unlike Baxter. The dog was usually all over the place, returning to the cabin in the evening. When night fell, Nora set out the dog food and locked up the cabin. The couple had dinner and soon went to bed. However, their sweet slumber was disrupted soon after to a knock, not from their door, but it seemed from the other side of the wall outside. At once, the couple heard Baxter barking loudly. Do you think it's an intruder? I don't know. You stay put. I'll go check it out. Earl took his axe and went out the door scanning the area. Baxter was far out by the trees, barking nonstop. After walking around the cabin, Earl didn't seem to notice any sign of intrusion, however. Baxter continued to behave aggressively. What's wrong with him? Nora said, checking Baxter's eyes. Do you think he's sick? His eyes look a little cloudy, and he's shaking a little bit. Let's let him sleep inside tonight. I don't know what's gotten into him. The couple tried to fall asleep, but Baxter whimpered and cried. Nora got up to the sound of thunder rumbling outside. It had started to rain, and the clouds in the skies covered over the full moon, making it darker than it already was. Earl hurried to cover the new piles of firewood he had chopped earlier with the large truck. As soon as Baxter saw Earl go out the door, he followed after him. Nora, get Baxter inside, it's pouring. But before Nora could get hold of Baxter, he ran towards the woods again and began barking. Just as Earl went to get him, Baxter turned around, running towards him as if he were running away from something. Earl held out his arms to get hold of the dog. Just when he froze in fear, seeing Baxter fall, not where he was, but as if something had thrown the dog to the side. Nora rushed outside, seeing what had happened. Baxter was whimpering in pain on the ground. How could this happen? Earl, look at these marks on his side. I'm getting a bad feeling, Nora said, looking out at the woods that surrounded their cabin. There's... there's something here. We have to get inside right now. It's not safe. Earl picked up the shaking dog and the couple hurried inside. They locked all their doors and windows and tried to warm up Baxter. Nora was petrified after what she saw and Earl was simply bewildered. Do you think Baxter is sensing something? Something else? That we can't? What? What are you talking about? Don't tell me about all these superstitions. They say dogs can sense strange things. They hear and see things that we can't. I don't know what's been going on, but I think there's something around here. You said you saw a woman out in the forest. These woods, it's not a good place. There are all kinds of beings out there. Spirits, spooks, ghosts and ghouls. There are also witches. Don't be ridiculous. There's a logical explanation to everything. But sometime later, something bizarre began to happen. Nora and Earl looked up at their ceiling shaking just a bit as they heard a loud thud on the roof, one after the other. Is it hailing outside? No, that's not the sound of hail. Nora peered out the curtains. It was pouring heavily, but there was no sign of any hail. When the sound continued, Earl insisted on checking outside. However, Nora didn't want to let him go. It's not safe, Earl. Nora, I have to check. We can't stay in here and wait for the roof to fall on us. It's as if someone is stomping up there. It can't be someone. It's something. Nora sat down besides Baxter, who had started to groan again. These are all signs of fear in a dog. Trembling, inability to settle. He's avoiding eye contact. Fear? Afraid of what? I don't know, but it started after you took him out this morning. When dogs become scared, they can become aggressive and even destructive at times. Didn't you say he tried to attack the woman out in the forest? It could have been anything. Maybe Baxter sniffed some fungus or some poisonous plants out there. I saw him playing with something. Maybe these are just reactions to that. We need to take him to the doctor. 
The couple waited and hoped for the strange occurrences to stop. And soon enough, the loud noises from the roof did stop, but it wasn't before long that they heard another loud crashing noise from in front of their cabin. Feeling the ground shake under them, Nora was horrified, assuming something terrible had indeed occurred. Earl peered out the window, shocked to see the large logs in front of his cabin were thrown all over the ground. The rain had slowed down and the winds weren't strong enough to throw over the logs. This was impossible considering the weight and the size. How could this happen? Nora held Earl's shoulder, now trembling in fear. We aren't safe here, Earl. There's something out there. It's after us. Just then, the cabin took a jolting shake. Earl and Nora were horrified when they realized those very logs were being thrown at the cabin. We have to get out of here. Whatever this thing is, it's going to break down the cabin. And just as they feared, the cabin began to break apart. Earl and Nora had to get out before everything would collapse onto them. Through the window in the back, the couple climbed out with their dog and fled to the dock. They watched their home crumble to the ground. There was no explanation to what happened that night. All they knew was if they had stayed there, they wouldn't have been alive to tell the story today. Click on the subscribe button and check out more awesome videos on our channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon because you know it's interesting.